Imagine a scenario we all encounter in life. It's Saturday afternoon, you've just finished a workout and you've planned to spend the rest of the day working on a side hustle or a study assignment. Basically an activity that should benefit you in the long run. You are feeling pretty motivated, but then a friend calls you. Yo. Yo bro, are you joining us today for this awesome beach party? Everyone's going. Um. What would you do? Would you join the party or would you stick to your plan? Now for most of us, the motivation that you had starts shifting into something different. Something that we call FOMO, also known as the fear of missing out, which can be defined as a worried feeling that you may miss exciting events that other people are going to especially caused by things you see on social media. Now, in order to better cope with this feeling of missing out, we need to dive deeper. So hang on. In this digital age, we have instant access to other people's lives. And because of this, we are more aware than ever of how we are spending our time. And for some, this constant stream of people's highlights can lead to a fear of missing out. And want to know the best part? Several studies suggest that FOMO can lead to excessive smartphone use because people want to stay updated on what their friends are doing. But guess what? They also found the other way around. Using our phones all the time and seeing our friends' highlights can actually make our FOMO even worse. So it's like a loop. FOMO and our smartphone, they are like best friends. They keep each other going. And a word of caution, they also found that this happens especially among young people. But it's not only related to social media. In fact, studies show that the same amount of FOMO can be experienced whether you hear about a missed event from a friend or from an online post. What's your plan for tonight? Ah, I have to study, man. You? I'm going to this party, man. Everyone's going. Party? Everyone's going? So FOMO is real and unfortunately existing research consistently show us that it has a negative effect on our mental health. I mean FOMO is positively correlated with depression and anxiety, it can cause stress and sleep disorders, it also decreases well-being and life satisfaction. So if you are experiencing this then luckily there are solutions for it. But first, it's important to know why we experience FOMO. Let's dive into it. Although FOMO is closely related to our social media use, this doesn't mean that FOMO is a completely new concept. As described in this study, FOMO is rooted in one of the critical theories of psychology called the self-determination theory. Now very briefly, according to this theory, human beings have three basic psychological needs, which are autonomy, that basically means feeling authentic and that you have the feeling of making your own choices, competence, or in other words, feeling like you have control over outcomes, like that we have the skills required to do the work ourselves, and relatedness, or in simple terms, feeling connected to other people. It has to do with a sense of belonging, a feeling that you matter to other people that are there. Now, when these needs are met, our self-motivation and mental health thrive. But when they are not met, our motivation and sense of well-being slack. Now, here comes the interesting part. One of the reasons we experience this fear of missing out is because we all have this basic need to be part of a group and feeling connected to other people. So when we don't feel like we're fitting in or we don't feel like we belong, then we can experience FOMO. So in relation to this theory, this means that people with low relatedness desire a need for belonging, which is positively correlated with FOMO. But beware, there's more. And trust me, things get more interesting from here. To understand better why we experience FOMO, we need to dive in a cognitive bias that we all have, and it's called loss aversion. In simple terms, loss aversion means that we, as people, are more afraid of losing than winning. Studies even suggest that the pain of losing is psychologically twice as powerful as the pleasure of gaining. Now, FOMO is very closely related to this. We feel the pain of missing out on something far more than actually being there. And as a result, we sometimes make poor decisions. For instance, we choose to go to a party, but what we actually need is a good night of sleep. And to be honest, this is the problem with FOMO. 
These decisions driven by FOMO, a lot of times they don't benefit us in the long run. And if you think about it, we see FOMO everywhere. A stock market investor who fears about not making money if he don't invest in a specific stock at the right time. Or a college student who never skips a party because they are scared of missing out on all the fun. And even marketeers use FOMO to their advantage. Like when they say there are only a few rooms left to book. But from this point on, FOMO cannot fool us anymore because now we know what it is and why it happens. And being aware of this is always the first step to any change. So now the most important question, how can we tackle this fear of missing out? Well, first off, since FOMO is very closely related to our social media use, one of the easiest things that we can do is to limit or even eliminate our social media use. This study indicated that limiting social media to 30 minutes a day significantly reduces FOMO and anxiety and increases overall well-being. Now you can also try a social media detox, which I did in the past and I highly recommend it to everyone. If you are curious, I will place a link to the video in the description. Next up, identify your core values and accept outcomes. What do I mean with this? Well, you gotta pause for a moment and think about what really matters to you, like family, career, health, your study or personal growth. By understanding your core values, you can make more intentional choices. For example, if acing your exams is a big deal for you, then it's probably not the best idea to hit a party when you should be hitting the books. And once you make a choice that lines up with your core values, you gotta own it. So no more wondering if you are missing out on all the fun, stay true to what is important to you. Now the final strategy to overcome FOMO, and to be honest, this one works best for me, is to make use of something called reverence points. Let me explain and let's keep this going to a party as an example. If you feel a strong sense of FOMO, like, oh, if I don't go to this party, then I won't miss out on all the fun, then think about all the parties that you have been to in the past. Were they really that fun? From my experience, most parties were pretty okay, but they weren't something that I absolutely didn't want to miss. And if you really think about it, occasionally missing a party isn't a big deal. I mean, in the future, there are many opportunities to go to a lot more parties. So using reference points like this really helps me to overcome my FOMO. Then some final words of wisdom. As almost everything in life, FOMO isn't all bad. Sometimes it's a powerful tool to take more risks. Because sometimes taking a bit more risk can be really beneficial for you. But most importantly, now that we know what FOMO is, why we experience it and how we can tackle it, we have the knowledge to control it and let it work in our advantage. Now don't forget to like the video and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe and I see you in the next one. Cheers.